Hey everyone, today I'm going to go over how to install Blender and how to configure Blender version 2.91.2 in the year 2021. I'll also go over shortcuts I use daily and default settings for Blender so that you can get the most out of your installation. We'll start by installing Blender from the link provided in the description. So skip ahead if you have already installed Blender on your machine. We're currently on version 2.9, but you can experiment with other versions or download the LTS version of Blender, Blender 2.83, from their website. For the purposes of this video, we'll be working with the most current version, 2.91.2. Once you have the file downloaded, you can open up the install file and you're guided through the installation process. Click next and wait for the setup wizard to finish the installation. When prompted by Windows, allow Blender to make changes to your device and once setup is finished, click finished and open up Blender for the first time. When you open Blender for the first time, this section will have some initial preferences. I use left mouse button to select and keep everything else as the default settings. After setting these settings, this initial splash screen will be home to recent files and templates for new files. You can also recover your last session from here, as well as check the Blender release notes for the version you're working with. For this tutorial, we'll start a general file. When you first open Blender, you may be overwhelmed by the interface. This is a perfectly normal reaction to Blender's not-so-intuitive modular setup. Once you get comfortable with Blender, you can start pushing the limits of the interface further and further. You'll notice if you hover over the corners of the interface, a crosshairs appears. If you click down and drag, Blender generates a new layout interface for you. These windows can be changed to fit your needs. There are also different workspaces that you can navigate to through the tabs at the top. For the most part, you'll be spending a majority of your time in layout mode and working with the default workspace, but it's good to know how to modify these windows for when the time arises. To close a window, click on the border between windows and then right click to join the areas. This skill comes in handy when accidentally opening windows or when the default workspaces aren't working for you. It helps when navigating layout mode to envision yourself as an artist in their studio. Your perspective is omniscient. You can move about the scene to observe your art from different viewpoints. Here's the point where I have to make a disclaimer. If you're using your laptop tracking pad or anything other than a three button mouse with Blender, good frickin' luck. The rest of this tutorial uses shortcuts and bindings that rely on a three button mouse for support. Don't know if your mouse is a three button mouse? Try holding the middle button or scroll wheel and dragging across the screen. It should rotate your view around like this. Scrolling in and out will zoom in and out. Holding shift and the middle mouse button will pan around a fixed view. Now, since we've already gotten critical with the three button mouse, let's take a look at your keyboard. Does it have a numpad? Numbers that look like this on the right side? If not, we're going to need to go into preferences and input to emulate numpad. We can also emulate a three button mouse here and set other key bindings. While we're in our preferences, let's also go into the add-on section, search for Node Wrangler and make sure the checkbox is ticked. Back in our layout section, we can select our default cube by clicking it. In object mode, we have access to some basic tools. By default, we have the select box tool selected. Hovering over the tool section on the left will give us a description of the tool as well as its shortcut. Shift space brings up our tool module at your cursor and B brings up the selection box. You can also use C to select in a different way. The cursor tool allows us to change the position of our layout's cursor. 
This is a point of focus in your project that you'll use to set origins and a lot more. The next object mode tool is move. With our box selected, we can move our object along different axes. You can also use the shortcut G to move freely or G followed by X, Y, or Z to move along a fixed axis. The next tool is rotate, which allows us to rotate our object along an axis. The shortcut for rotation is R. You can follow this by the axis and angle of rotation. For instance, if I press R, X, 90, the box will rotate 90 degrees on the X axis. The next tool in object mode is scale. This allows you to scale a shape. You can also press S to scale freely or follow it with the axis letter and a number to scale or shrink your object. The last three tools I never use, so we'll skip them for now. It's important to mention that we've spent the entirety of this tutorial in object mode. There will be other videos in the Blender Foundations tutorial series that will walk you through the different interaction modes. Object mode is the most basic. When we get into modeling, we'll start working with edit mode and from there we'll work outwards. The default Blender project always starts with a camera, a cube, and a light. We can check on the objects within our scene from the outliner. We can also select our objects from here or shift select multiple objects. If we have a camera in our scene, pressing zero will align our view with the cameras. We can also press one for front view, three for side view, five to switch between orthographic and non-orthographic views, and seven or nine for top and bottom views. With five toggled on and orthographic view on, we can view our scene with more precision. This comes in handy in future videos. With our cube selected, we can press delete to delete. Control Z is the classic shortcut to undo, and you can press X and OK to delete an object. Shift A is a shortcut I use frequently to bring objects into the layout. Let's spawn a UV sphere primitive. We can use G and S to move and scale as we learned earlier. Shift D will duplicate the spheres and we can press B to bounding box select all of our spheres. With all our spheres selected, Control J will join them into one object and make it easier to work with this group of objects from the outliner. In the properties menu, we can change the color of our spherical atomic shape by adding a material and changing the base color. If the color of your material is not appearing for you, it may be because you're in the wrong viewport mode. In the upper right section of the layout, you can toggle between modes. Rendered mode will give you a view that is close to what the final version should look like. Shading will show colors and textures, but omit lighting and other details. Solid view will show the meshes with a default gray base. And wireframe will provide you with the wireframe to view vertexes and edges of your shape. For now, we'll stay in rendered view. Now, to render our image, we can go to our scene settings, which looks like a printer icon. Here you can change the resolution of the image. I'm gonna use a square dimension, so 500 by 500 pixels should work for this one. Also, these spheres are looking a little jagged with the vertices showing, so we can select the sphere shape and press F3 to search for shade smooth. And with the spheres selected, we can click shade smooth to give our render better results. Scroll to the film dropdown and tick transparent. Then go to render and render as an image, not as an animation. This pulls up a render window. Inside the window, press F3 to search shortcuts and search for save as image. Save your rendered image to a spot that makes sense. There you have it your first basic render in Blender. You are now officially a 3D artist. Stay tuned for more Blender Foundations videos to keep on learning.